something in there. Um, now, interestingly, carpal tunnel syndrome produces central changes. It produces central sensitization, which, but what's fascinating is if, if, if the central sensitization is such a bad guy for differential diagnosis, why do the tests do so well in the diagnostic efficacy studies when they're compared with conduction tests? <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about uh, that later, but an example of actually reinforcing the idea that central sensitization could produce false positives, if you will, in physical exam and treatment, hockey player came, came in to me one day, ice hockey. Believe it or not, in Adelaide, South Australia, where it gets to 110, 120 degrees in summer and never gets cold in the winter, we have an ice hockey league. <laughs> and there are two teams and both reach the final every year. It's a huge event. Who's going to win this year? Them or them? Team A or Team B? Anyway, this ice hockey player came, and he, as they do, they have injuries. They fall. They get hit. Anyway, he had a hit. He fell over on, his, on the side of his body, banged his, his hip, and got wrenched. And he came in to me with groin pain and posterior lateral hip pain and a bit of down in the knee sort of stuff. <clears throat> Did some physical tests. Internal external rotation, very abnormal, reproduced his pain. Um, in 90 degrees hip flexion, just compressing his, uh, his um, acetabulum and his femoral, he um, femoral head reproduced his pain. Okay, well that makes sense. But what was really interesting is the slump reproduced it as well. The slump test reproduced his groin pain. Now neck flexion changed his groin pain. Now how does that happen if it's a hip problem? It could have been sciatic nerve in the posterior hip area. Um, but groin pain doesn't make sense. The prone knee bend reproduced it as well. So there's something going on here that doesn't make sense. And what turned, it turned out to happen, um, a few days later he returned after the first visit. He's lying down there and I noticed he was quite sweaty. And, and I said, are you, you okay? He goes, yeah, I've been a bit sick over the last couple of days. I think I've got a fever or something. And his pain was constant and worsening. Fever? go to the doctor. And he had an abscess in his hip. He had surgery to have it evacuated and he came right very quickly. Now that's a really good example of severe nociception producing central sensitization and false positives. But even with that, biomedically that was discernible. There were features there from a, a red flag perspective that told me, or the, any therapist hopefully, see a doctor. Because without that, he could have a serious, he could end up with serious hip problems. I mean, not just replacement, you know, AVNS, vascular necrosis, the whole lot. Anyway, so point is, central sensitization did produce false positives. It seems that way. Next thing, the dog. <clears throat> Male dogs like to lick their testicles, don't they? Well, my friends have got a dog, a male, and he found, one day he found he was having trouble with this. And he would turn around and to partake of the pleasures, and he would yelp, and he'd stop. And his, his owners got very concerned about this, and he was going, he's peeing a lot. And they, that's a bit weird. Anyway, uh, they said, look, you're a physio, what's wrong with our dog? I said, oh, well, come, and, come and have a look. I said, well, I'm not going to inspect that, <laughs> but I will look at his back. And, and I looked at his back, and you know, all, he was just sitting there, I go and touch the dog, I just touched him, and he'd go, oh, like this. He says, as I say, why did you do that? And I touch him again, he oh, why did you, why did you do that? So clearly, other parts of his body were okay, but around his back and the side of his abdomen, it was painful. So, peeing a lot, back pain, see a vet. <laughs> For a dog anyway. Anyway, so off to the vet, and they did a scan, and they found this bladder full of a big ball of calcium. And, and he was in trouble. He could have gone to renal failure and clogging and everything like that. Anyway, so they gave him medication, re removed it, which slowly dissolved the calcium, and he came right. No more allodynia. Now, he had a false positive in his back from visceral pain. And that's the kind of thing we see clinically. We don't realise it. And it's, I must say, it's only a matter of time before a long, someone in their, in their career will see someone with a tumour or something serious. So that's a really good example of severe nociception producing um, allodynia, central sensitization, and everything. 